You're watching Tag TV. Hello, you us. I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. As economic slowdown looms over countries around the world, both developing and developed, India has emerged as one of the handful countries that have not just shown a robust recovery, but is set to bounce back to its pre-COVID level growth. Different analysts and observers say that it will remain the fastest amongst the major economies of the world. The coronavirus pandemic and the containment measures have prompted governments world over to enact push the global economy into a recession. And today, after more than two and a half years, only a few world economies have managed to bounce back. Supply chain disruptions and debilitating lockdowns upended global trade as we know it, which contributed to a worldwide economic slowdown, prompting countries to take drastic monetary steps to bail out their economies. However, in these testing times, India was among the lucky few that managed to successfully navigate through the COVID headwinds. With a strong economic foundation and timely government intervention, the Indian economy remained resilient throughout the pandemic. As per the International Economic Resilience Index, the Indian economy's rank elevated from fourth position in 2020 to the second position in 2022 among the 10 leading global economies. India, through its effective and dynamic policies, has shown a consistent improvement in its macroeconomic performance in recent years. The immediate containment measures and extent of effective policies of the government, along with the calibrated measures by the RBI and untiring efforts of the industry, shifted the path of India's economic growth trajectory to the growing side again. The Reserve Bank of India has forecasted GDP growth of 7.2% for the current financial year. It flagged protracted geopolitical tensions, rising global financial market volatility, tightening global financial conditions, and global recession risks as potential headwinds to the Indian economy. Like many global economies, India too faces the issue of rising prices. The RBI recently hiked the repo rate by 50 basis points, its third hike in the current financial year to beat high inflation. According to the latest Bloomberg survey of economists, while the risk of recession in a handful of Asian economies is rising, India has zero probability of slipping into recession. Our policy environment has proven itself to be sturdy and dynamic enough to tackle any global crisis, as was observed in the Lehman crisis and recently in the COVID-19 times as well. Amid the global challenges, India has successfully become the world's seventh favorite destination for investment. It is not just the result of the country's flourishing economy, huge consumer market, and abundant skills and talent, but also its rapidly expanding manufacturing, digital information technology sectors as well. India's manufacturing exports, which have traditionally grown between 5% and 10%, have seen tremendous growth over the last two years, with a compound annual growth rate of 15%. India reached 418 billion USD in manufacturing exports in the 2022 fiscal year. From one unicorn startup in 2014 to over 100 unicorn startups, India's youth are representing the country on the global stage. Moving on. Sri Lanka is now witnessing fresh protests as the government has launched a crackdown against those who were involved in demonstrations and the subsequent ouster of the Rajapaksa brothers. A number of them have been detained. People said the agencies were singling out the dissenters and were putting them behind bars. Such developments have attracted bad international press and the human rights NGOs too have condemned the measures adopted by the new Vikramasinghe government. We bring you the story.
Hundreds of pro-democracy activists marched to Independence Square in Sri Lanka's commercial capital this week and demanded the release of detained demonstrators. These protests took place a month after massive protests forced the then-president Gotabaya Rajapaksa to step down. Activists accuse Vikramasinghe and his government of cracking down on protesters who helped topple the government of Rajapaksa. <laughs> Rate tawadun kita jana tawat bara pataran netu me parlimen tu bisalah. Nawa jana watan kita jadi ni jana barang kita jadi ni kena balap ayam kerana tamai me prajna apa bisalah kita me ajna apa jadi pat kene. Vikram Singh, a six-time prime minister, took charge despite public anger with the ruling elite after months of severe shortages of fuel, food, and medicines. Ranil Vikramasinghe was voted in as acting president in Sri Lanka by lawmakers on July 20, with many hoping his long experience in government could help pull the country out of crippling economic and political crisis. Later, he was elevated to the presidential position following an all-party consensus. Since then, hundreds of pro-democracy activists have carried out marches in and around capital Colombo, demanding the release of detained demonstrators and an end to the state of emergency imposed by the government. We are dinner, see, at a very call at this America Janatawa, a douche the pollinator, may uh, one chenica pollen to river, you're a mirror to be nasty to river, Tavant, Aragaliakara, Yaragalin, Passe, then Ekinica, Dadeam Karana, Ranil, Rajapakshandu, Hatay to Kermintibino, may one of the high academic promania, Pasuka, Sima, Tulama, Atran Gutarakin Tibino, Samaru, Bandanagaraka, Tibra, Adahas, Palakirim, Dushane, a Vancha, but the Mardane, a heavy mape idea. एक राज्य की अभी तक पीरिना मानने होने ने एक मूली का आयतिया कांड करने व्यवस्था में सीएलओ प्रजातंत्रवादी आवकाश और दाहिमी वेला a New York Times report last week said several demonstration leaders have been arrested and others had received travel bans as authorities try to clear up the last remaining protest tents near key government buildings. Before it, the Human Rights Watch also said the Sri Lankan government was using emergency regulations to harass and arbitrarily detain activists seeking political reform and accountability for the country's economic crisis. Only a few days ago, the demonstrators had dismantled their structures at the main protest site outside the presidential palace after police announced an ultimatum for them to vacate the site. The site was occupied for four months and had major political decisions including resignation and fleeing of Rajapaksa brothers and a change in the top positions of the government. The protesters are now demanding fresh elections in the country as they believe that current leadership too is part of the same elite group that Rajapaksas belong to. And they say they will not give up their struggle until the country sees a real change. Moving on. In a major international success, the Al-Qaeda chief Ayman al-Zawahiri was droned dead by US forces in Afghanistan. And while the news has set off a wave of exultation across the media and civilians, a few, including the United States, who have been fighting against growing radicalism and terrorism, have called out Taliban, the de facto government of Afghanistan, as the terrorist was living and operating right under their nose. July 31st, 2022. A missile fired from an American drone killed the leader of Al-Qaeda, Ayman al-Zawahiri, in Kabul. The strike was the biggest blow to the terrorist group since the killing of the 9-11 mastermind Osama bin Laden in Pakistan over a decade ago. 
Zawahiri had a 25 million USD bounty on his head for coordinating several terror attacks, including co-conspiring in the 9-11 attacks, which killed nearly 3,000 people. According to several media reports, U.S. intelligence tracked down Osama's successor in Afghanistan early this year, after he relocated from Pakistan to an upscale neighborhood in Kabul. No matter how long it takes, no matter where you hide, if you are a threat to our people, the United States will find you and take you out. While the news of Zawahiri's killing was welcomed the world over, it is another embarrassment to the Taliban, which had promised to wipe out all terrorist groups from its territory during the Doha Agreement. In an attempt to save face, the Taliban have claimed that the regime had no information about the Al-Qaeda leader's presence in Afghanistan. Unconvinced by their response, both Washington and other political observers have accused the group of double-dealing. The fact that Zawahiri's hideout was less than two kilometers away from the Taliban's intelligence headquarters in Kabul poses some serious questions before the Afghan leadership. Historically, the Taliban and Al-Qaeda have had the same ideological leanings. Washington believes that the former doesn't seem to be parting ways with the latter, despite its claims to the contrary. Perhaps there is complete distrust between the U.S. and Taliban, especially the manner in which Taliban took over power in August 15th, in spite of uh, the Doha deal. Uh, so therefore, they were tracking uh, Al Jawari on their own. Pakistan too was facing many questions and criticism as Zawahiri was long believed to have been living in that country. The fugitive Al-Qaeda leader was alleged to be hosted in Kabul by the Haqqani network, a powerful faction within the Taliban with deep ties to the Pakistani intelligence community. The killing of al-Zawahiri could most probably help the Islamic State in Khorasan province in enlarging its base in Afghanistan. Zawahiri's presence in Afghanistan is a major blow to the Taliban's credibility and dents the group's efforts to gain legitimacy in the eyes of the world. Harboring one of the most wanted men in the world does not help their cause. Time now for Asia This Week, the stories from across the continent. Israeli aircraft struck in Gaza and Palestinians fired rockets deep into Israel last week. It happened a day after an Israeli operation against the Islamic Jihad militant group set off a cross-border flare-up that ended more than a year of relative calm. Islamic Jihad fired rocket salvos as far as Israel's commercial hub Tel Aviv after Israel killed one of the group's senior commanders in a surprise daytime airstrike on a Gaza city tower. The military said that Israel struck more Islamic Jihad militants and weapon depots hidden in residential areas last week. Bombings of at least five houses sent huge clouds of smoke and debris into the air as explosions rocked Gaza and ambulances rushed through the streets. Palestinian militants fired at least 200 rockets at Israel, most of them intercepted, setting off air raid sirens and sending people running to bomb shelters. Thousands of Shiite Muslim worshippers conversed at Imam Hussein Holy Shrine in Iraq's Karbala past week to commemorate Ashura, a religious festival to honor the martyrdom of Imam Hussein, the grandson of the Prophet Muhammad. Worshippers gathered to run, walk and beat their chest in circles while chanting and self-flagellating, all rituals carried out to celebrate the holy festival. Imam Hussein died in the Battle of Karbala in 680 AD. The battle cemented a schism in Islam between Shiites and Sunnis. The entire riot lasts more than a week and ends on Ashura or the 10th day of Muslim month of Muharram, which marks the moment Hussein was killed and beheaded by his enemies in Karbala. Japanese company Rene has introduced a new showroom in Nagoya at the headquarters of the company. Rene is a global manufacturing company that provides water heaters, kitchen appliances, air conditioning, bath facilities and other machinery to help people live healthier and more comfortable lives. 
It's been more than 100 years since Rene launched its gas supply line, which has some different products like gas stove, oven, water heaters and others. Even users can combine cooking utensils and cooking applications developed by Rene and cook them automatically. Bubble bath units generate large amounts of bubbles of various sizes to provide a comfortable bath time. Rene started to produce gas appliances, but under the 2050 carbon neutral movement, energy saving is an important issue all over the world. But Rene's policy is to save energy without patience. It means Rene products realize energy savings by themselves. The expertise and experience of Rene guarantees a comfortable and healthy life along with contributing to a reduction in carbon emissions. Developing metaverse and embodied virtual reality experience has become a key component in global business. 3D virtual spaces for businesses is reforming enterprises along with achieving a milestone in artificial intelligence with each passing day. This is a virtual space that recreates major tourist attractions in Tokyo, Japan. Users can freely walk around places like Akihabara, which is known as an electric town and an old traditional shrine, along with enjoying the scenery and shopping. This is a virtual space where users can participate as crew members of the International Space Station. With the cooperation of ZAXA, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, users can enjoy a real-time view by connecting to the real-time location of the space station. After the invention of the internet and social networking services, the invention and upgradations of metaverse technologies are attracting investments and users from around the world. Moving on. Living up to the spirit and the label of the land of festivals, India marked a number of festivals this week. While the holy month of Shravan culminated with devotion and fanfare, the week also witnessed the yearly celebration of sibling festival Raksha Bandhan. With country's 76th Independence Day just round the corner, the festive spirit kept Indians hooked in festive spirit throughout the week. Tens of thousands of Hindus flocked temples of Hindu god of destruction, Lord Shiva, across India to mark the last Monday of the auspicious Hindu month of Shravan. Devotees offered prayers to observe the festivities that came after a gap of two years owing to the coronavirus pandemic. Priests in the central Ujjain city bathed the Shivlingam, which is also termed as the phallic representation of Lord Shiva, with curd and milk and performed rituals with fire and ashes as a palais played in the background. Monsoon season in India is associated with Lord Shiva and it is believed that praying to him during the period would help bring luck and prosperity to the devotees. The devotees also believe that offering prayers to Shiva would help them attain salvation. Bhagwan ki jo parampara anusar, panchamrit pujan, 
अरसों से भगवान का स्नान भस्म स्नान भांग से भगवान का श्रृंगार और भगवान की दिव्य मंगला आरती संपन्न की गई जो भगवान महाकालेश्वर के के हजारों भक्तों ने उसका दर्शन लाभ प्राप्त किया The sibling festival was also celebrated this week with Hindu women tying sacred rakhi threads on the wrists of soldiers in the northern Atari town at the border between India and Pakistan. Hindu women tie rakhi to their brothers to celebrate the revered bond between them. The eastern Bhubaneswar city witnessed children of prisoners observing the day as they tied rakhi and performed a ritual with fire and flowers. The festival locally termed Raksha Bandhan is celebrated on the full moon night in the holy month of Shravan. Meanwhile, the entire India with people from all walks of life involved is witnessing a festive spirit with the country set to mark 75th anniversary of its independence. A shop in the Indian's northern Lucknow city sold tricolor sweets depicting the colors of the national flag ahead of the country's independence day. to mark Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav an initiative to celebrate 75 years of independence around 10 different varieties are on display at the sweet shop that has become a major attraction for customers Proprietor of Chappan Bhog Sweet Shop Ravindra Gupta said the idea behind preparing such sweets was to reflect the identity of India in them so that the young generation can connect to it पंद्रह अगस्त का फेस्टिवल भी कि हम एंजॉय करें सेलिब्रेट करें अब पंद्रह अगस्त है तो उसके लिए जो मिठाइयाँ और सारी चीज़ें वो कैसी हों कहीं ना कहीं उनमें हमारे देश का जो अपनी पहचान है जो हमारा ट्राई कलर है तिरंगा जो हमारी शान है वो चीज़ें उसके उससे कनेक्ट हों और हमारी जो भावी पीढ़ी है जो आज के लोग हैं वो उसको अपने को जोड़ पाएँ उसको ध्यान में रखते हुए हमने ये ट्राई कलर सीरीज पूरी निकाली है India won its independence from the British in 1947 but was divided into two separate nations after a bloody partition India and Pakistan The government of India has launched several programs in order to mark the platinum jubilee of its independence which also involves hoisting of the Indian national flag tiranga at every home in the country The country is all set to celebrate its independence day like never before. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.